please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. Welcome back to the Tracks for Africa YouTube channel, everybody. In this very exciting episode, we travel to many of the country's iconic locations, including roads in the Eastern Cape, Nordia's Neck Pass, the Drakensberg, Sani Pass, and the beautiful little village of Clarence in the Free State. As in the previous episode, we experienced extreme weather conditions, including snow in Sani Pass, which was an absolute highlight for us. Do stay tuned to the end of this episode. It is extremely exciting and our last long trip of 2023. Thanks, Kirsten. And I'll repeat what you said. This is a really great and really visual episode. So stay right to the end and watch everything. Our route basically starts in Addo Elephant Park and we go up Zuberg Pass all the way through the backcountry roads of the Eastern Cape Highlands, through Dortrecht, through Rhodes, Barclay East, right up into Matatiel and then into the Drakensberg up Sani Pass, we've shot some incredible footage and this is a program that 4x4 enthusiasts and off-road drivers and motorcyclists are really going to enjoy it. There's a lot of visuals, a lot of incredible scenery from Addo to Clarence, it's an incredible route so stay right through to the end and please like and share this video and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and join our Tracks for Africa community. The entire route for this trip was planned on the beta version of the Tracks for Africa Trip Planner which is now available for public testing under the Trip Planning tab on the Tracks for Africa website. The route data can either be exported as a GPX or KML file or synced with the Tracks for Africa guide app running on your mobile phone or Android tablet which you can have mounted in the vehicle. The guide app is offline and doesn't require any cell phone reception for route information and navigation. With your device's location switched on, you will be able to see your position in relation to the route as you navigate. We started our route in Addo, leaving Rosedale Organic Farm early and heading halfway up Zuberg Pass, then crossing east through Addo Elephant National Park on a narrow but wonderful 4x4 track to join the N10. We then zigzagged our way through Rebeck East and followed the R344 gravel road north to Adelaide for the overnight stop. The gravel track running through Addo Elephant National Park is not suited to sedan vehicles. High clearance and or four-wheel drive is required in some sections, but it's adventurous and includes dozens of river crossings. There are electronic control gates at the entrance and exit to Addo Elephant National Park. Adventure bikers would not be allowed through this section of Addo Elephant Park. They would have to continue to the top of Zuberg Pass, then join the N10 via short gravel road. Most of the R344 is in good condition, however there are some sections where the road narrows down to a two-spore track for a few kilometers. Our first day in the Eastern Cape backcountry was stunning, and for those with off-road travel in their blood, both vehicles and adventure bikes, this route following the R344 should be on your bucket list. 
Leaving Adelaide the next morning, we continued on the R344 gravel road through the mountains towards Tarkestot, Stagsthroem and eventually ending our day in Dortrecht. On some of the gravel roads travelling through farming regions, security boom gates are active. However, some don't work electronically and need to be opened manually. Fortunately, this one still worked. Eastern Cape landscapes continued to impress, a collection of winding mountain passes and stunning valleys with small farms dotted along the route made for fantastic aerial views. Farms and small holdings of course mean animals, with many cows and sheep being moved from farm to farm, often blocking the road. Around every corner, another valley and yet another beautiful mountain pass. The 260 km route following the R396 gravel road from Dortrecht through Barkley East, Rhodes, Nordia's Neck, Pitsing Pass and ending at Murdenas Neck Pass at the T-junction of the R56 is the main route through the Eastern Cape Highlands. The passes are some of the highest in South Africa with Nordia's Neck shortly after Rhodes to 2,596 meters above sea level. This section of our trip is where the roads and scenery really become exciting. Our route includes an overnight stop in the quaint village of Rhodes. Four-wheel drive is not required for this route, but in wet season from November to May and in winter, July, August, if there has been snowfalls, it's preferable to be in a four-wheel drive vehicle. For adventure bikers, this route is best done in the dry months of May and June. Rhodes was declared a conservation area in 1997 and is frequented by weekend off-road travellers and adventure bikers. It's situated 24 kilometres from Ben Magdui Pass, the highest pass in South Africa, sitting at an altitude of 3,001 metres above sea level. Unfortunately, Ben Magdui Pass is situated inside the permanently closed Tiffendale Ski Resort area and is not easily accessible. The Rhodes Hotel was built in 1888 and boasts a rich history. It's now under new ownership and partial restoration and revamping is underway. The hotel can accommodate up to 65 guests in cozy ensuite rooms. Self-catering accommodation is also available at adjoining cottages. Kirsten and I enjoyed our peaceful stay and late afternoon stroll around the village.
Good morning from one of the highest villages in South Africa. We are in Rhodes this morning and uh, yesterday we had an incredible drive from Dordrecht up through all the back country through Rousseau and through Killian's Pass, Hrelings Pass, through Barclay East and um, arriving in Rhodes yesterday mid-afternoon giving us time to walk around the village and have a look at just how beautiful and peaceful this village is. Today's route is quite a short one. We are going from Rhodes to Matatiel. The weather looks pretty good this morning. It is scheduled to rain later today, so we want to try and be off the gravel and on the tar to Mount Fletcher and Matatiel before the rain comes. So a lot of incredible driving today. It is an absolutely beautiful pass and we're really looking forward to it. The Jimny has just been eating up this terrain. The roads have been in really fantastic condition. Uh, we can see that there has been some storm damage recently, but at the moment everything's nice and dry and it's just a fantastic drive, beautiful scenery. Nordia's Neck is one of the most spectacular passes and the gravel is generally in good condition, both in wet and dry seasons. The R396 route is a favourite amongst overlanders and organised 4x4 tours. Fortunately, we were ahead of this big group. After Pitsing and Lucyport Pass, we joined the R56 tar road to Mount Fletcher. It was time to air up the tyres again and continue to Resthaven BNB in Matatiel for our overnight stay. Here we are in Matatiel this morning. It's um, been raining for two days and the weather for the next four days doesn't look any better. And our plan today is to move towards Heimville with the intention of course of doing Sani Pass. So we've got to watch the weather quite carefully. Sani Pass is quite a difficult pass, especially the last five corners. And um, there was light snow predicted this morning and tomorrow. So we've really got to watch it, you know, getting all the way up to Sani Pass and then finding that the top four or five tight bends are very icy and full of snow means you've got to turn around and come down again. So we're going to move through to Heimville this morning and um, just sit there for a day, just watch the weather and if we get a break in the weather we will for sure attempt Sani Pass. But if not, there's not a lot we can do. These are the kind of things that happen on overland trips and uh, we've then just got to move on to our next destination which is Kathkin Peak, the central Drakensberg and take it from there. Hopefully there's been some light snow and it's nice and beautiful and then we've got stunning landscapes with snow-capped peaks which will just make the visuals really really amazing. The snow prediction was on point and after a full day of rain and freezing cold the skies opened to reveal an incredibly beautiful white-capped Drakensberg and Sani Pass. Timing was perfect. We got on the road early and made our way to the South African border post at the bottom of Sani Pass. It's tar the entire way to the South African border and now the serious gravel starts. Um, last time we did this pass was on an adventure motorcycle, uh, 2022, and the conditions were hectic. Um, for adventure motorcycles, mm, 
something I would advise being an expert rider, preferably do it solo. Uh, I did it on uh, a 1200 Super Tenor Ray with Kirsten on the back and uh, the last couple of corners were just almost unrideable. But then again, it was after quite a lot of heavy rain um, that that season it had. But we still made it to the top and um, it's pretty much for advanced or expert riders only if you're going to take a passenger up on pass on an adventure motorcycle. It's pretty tough going. The road is completely trashed from all the recent rains. Um, Kirsten is, uh, she can't hang on any longer and she's chosen to walk a little bit on the final two corners um, or three corners. It's just incredibly steep, incredibly loose and incredibly rough. We got to some very heavy switchbacks where I just knew I could not stay on the bike. Craig really needed to negotiate some really crazy, gnarly terrain and he needed to stand up. With the Jimny's tyres aired down to below one bar, we set off on the rough and rocky gravel pass with the snow-covered mountains ahead. The snow was approximately four inches deep and the road was not affected. So the Sani Pass road um, is in a much better condition than it, when it was uh, when we came up here on the motorcycle. It looks like it's been filled in quite a lot. Um, when we came it was just bedrock. Right now we don't even need 4x4. So we've stopped to just shoot some pictures and film this incredible waterfall and there's actually light snowflakes starting to fall again. So we're very close to the top of Sandy Pass now. Um, these are sort of the last uh, five or six really twisted corners. And um, the road condition's still okay. Um, we are in low range, um, but switching between low two and low one. And um, the road is not icy at all. There's a lot of snow around, but um, there's been quite a few breaks in sunshine today. So it's melted quite a lot of snow, but it's still absolutely stunning. It feels like about zero degrees now. Uh, there's been a couple of other cars passing us. Just absolutely, absolutely amazing to take our little Jimny Upsani Pass this weather. parked now on top of Sani Pass. Um, it has just of course clouded in completely. Um, we were going to go across into Lesotho and just go up to the highest pub in Africa but um, we don't really see the point. You actually can't see anything. It's almost completely whited out um, and most of the stunning footage of us driving up isn't clear. So we're not going to waste our time. We're going to turn around and we're going to head straight down Sani Pass. It's been absolutely amazing and um, Despite the road conditions being slightly wet, it's actually still very doable. Um, and one of the most unbelievable things is coming up behind me now. Four-wheel drive taxis. Yes, they have them here in Lesotho. And this is called the Toyota Super GL. Look at that. A four-wheel drive quantum taxi. We don't get them in, in South Africa, but they get them in Lesotho. And we often see them going up and down Sani Pass. Last time we were here, we, had a, we saw a taxi go up with like... 25 people in it and I just thought how the hell do they get up Sani Pass?
A little bit of a gloomy morning this morning. We're in um, Heimville still after yesterday's incredible trip up Sony Pass in the snow. Um, wonderful, incredibly comfortable stay at Woody's Cabin, um, just outside Heimville on a little farm. Really beautiful, comfortable, nice fireplace, really stunning. So today we're going to travel north on the lower Luteni road which is gravel might be a little muddy but that's not a problem it is scheduled to rain today um, with a little bit of a break tomorrow we're moving up towards Kathkin Peak area um, right near Monks Cowl and we've got a couple of short hikes we want to do there but with the weather being what it is we'll just have to watch see what happens and um, I don't mind doing the hikes in the light rain um, but let's just see how it goes there is apparently still a lot of snow in the mountain so it might be quite beautiful let's go and have a look off once we passed through Winterton and the Little Burg and the Champagne Castle region look promising for our planned short hikes. Drakensberg is the hiking mecca of South Africa. Armed with one of the latest Slingsby maps for Northern Drakensberg, now a Tracks for Africa product, we set off the next morning early for a short hike from Harborn Cottages to join the Crystal Falls and Sphinx Trail, part of the Monks Cow Hiking Trail Network. Over the next four days, we hiked parts of the Monks Cow Network and the Tugela Gorge in the Northern Drakensberg. But the highlight was yet to come. With the Tugela Falls officially being branded as the world's tallest waterfall since November 2021 at a staggering 983 meters, it's become the iconic hike to complete in the Drakensberg. The seven kilometer Sentinel Road getting there was the other reason we were excited about this hike. The first four and a half kilometers of the Sentinel Road from the Witsisok Junction is in extremely bad condition and we had to use four-wheel drive low range a few times. The last three kilometers to the Sentinel car park was paved with brick eight years ago, but the project was never finished. For visitors and hikers who don't have a four-wheel drive vehicle, shuttles run multiple times a day from Witsisuk Mountain Lodge at a cost of 180 Rand per person return. 
hiking permits can also be purchased at Witsisuk at a cost of 110 Rand per person or in the Sentinel car park in cash only. The Tugela Falls and Chain Ladder Hike is 6 kilometers one way to the Falls viewpoint on top of the amphitheater. Montesources is the highest point in South Africa, sitting at 3,050 meters, over 10,000 feet above sea level. A basic level of fitness is required for this hike. The starting altitude of 2,500 meters can be an issue for unfit hikers. The trail is initially steep, but once you've reached the contour of the chain ladder, it's relatively flat. The entire hike is 12 kilometers to the falls and back and can take approximately four hours as a round trip. Hikers with vertigo should take a guide with ropes and climbing harnesses. The chain ladder is not for the faint hearted. So here we are, believe it or not, Kirsten and I, we made it to the top of the amphitheater and we are now standing at the source of the Tugela, which is the highest waterfall in the world. Hey, I was hoping you would stay, but I've always known that you would go find your own way. We're leaving and moving on to Clarence now. Um, today is merely just a transit day through Golden Gate and finishing in Clarence and then we start our big journey back home. Leaving the Drakensberg behind, we were rewarded with the beauty of the Golden Gate Highlands National Park and we looked forward to the village of Clarence for our final night's day at the end of this epic journey. Whilst driving through the park, we were afforded the rare opportunity of witnessing an incredible stampede of over 150 eland and zebra. It was truly a case of being in the right place at the right time and having a camera on hand. And just as we thought it was over, the stampede followed us up Lichen Pass.
Clarence is nestled among the foothills of the Maluti Mountains in the Free State Province. Known as the Jewel of the Eastern Free State, it was established in 1912 and named after the town of Clarence in Switzerland, where Paul Kruger spent his last days in exile. For us, it signifies the end of an epic off-road journey across half of South Africa. It's been a magnificent adventure, creating this route from Addo in the Eastern Cape to Clarence in the Free State, and an absolute pleasure for us to share it with you. Stay tuned to see where we headed next. Today I'd love to put the spotlight on these fantastic Tracks for Africa t-shirts that Craig and I wear all the time when we're filming these episodes, as you will have seen. They have great elasticity, they're a fabulous length, they don't ride up, and the cut is unisex, so suitable for the guys and the girls. These fantastic t-shirts are available on the Tracks for Africa online shop. There you will see the selection available. They come in navy, black, khaki and brown with this fabulous Tracks for Africa logo on the front. Now is a great time to consider these as gifts with Christmas being around the corner. Lovely Christmas gift or a birthday gift for friends and family. The Western Cape region has hundreds of ox wagon trails dating back to the 1800s forged into the landscape. These are sought after trails by off-road enthusiasts and adventure bikers. In the next episode, we follow and film Tracks for Africa's Johan Grunewald on his Honda Africa Twin as he retraces the ox wagon trails left by the settlers. From Geismanshoek through Langeberg to the rugged Atakwas Kloof. Join us for what promises to be an exciting biking adventure through this iconic region. <laughs>